Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 15 of my linear algebra tutorial series. You guys have made it past all the hard stuff, and now we're just going to do really cool things from now on for the most part. In this part of the video, I'm going to cover rotating vectors using linear transformations, as well as scaling and compressing them. And I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so we're going to be able to rotate vectors a specific number of degrees using linear transformations. And basically, what we're going to do is we are going to use a formula. So this is going to be specific to R2. And let's say that we want to rotate a certain number of degrees for a vector x. And said formula is going to work out to be cosine of how much you want to rotate. Sine, same thing. This is in degrees negative sine and cosine. All right, so you just plug in whatever rotation degree angle you want, and then you're going to multiply that times said vector, and you're going to get that new vector value. So really cool stuff. So let's say we just have a bunch of points right here, and we want to rotate them 45 degrees. So this is basically a diamond shape. And we want to rotate it so that it is a square shape. All right, so how are we going to do that? Well, we are going to take uh, 45 degrees and plug it into this formula. And if we do that, we're going to end up getting square root of 2 divided by 2, square root of 2 divided by 2, negative square root of 2 divided by 2, square root of 2 divided by 2, and there you are. And then we can go and just plug in all of our vectors, just this simply. And there is four of them. And I have negative 4 here, or there's three of them, I mean. And I have room for three of them. I think you'll be able to figure this out. So we have negative 4 and O and 0 and negative 4 and 4 and O. And if we perform these calculations, this is going to give us negative 2 square root of 2, negative 2 square root of 2, and 2 times the square root of 2 is going to be approximately equal to 2.828. And this guy right here is going to be 2 square root of 2, negative 2 square root of 2, and 4, oh, this will be 2 square root of 2, and 2 square root of 2. And for our vector that doesn't fit on the screen, which is going to be 0 and 4, this is going to be negative 2 square root of 2 and 2 square root of 2. All right. So let's go and plot that out. Well, I said it's roughly going to be equal to 2.8. So that means we are going to be almost at 3. So we are going to have a point roughly in this vicinity and then another point roughly in this vicinity and then another point here and another point there and you can see that we were able to rotate from our diamond shape into a square shape quite simply all right so there we did it all right cool stuff but there's different formulas if we are working in r3 and I will present them to you, and then for homework, you can just go and work with them on your own. So these are the R3 formulas, and if you want to rotate a certain number of degrees, and of course you can combine these and rotate and model other different degrees. So if you want to rotate around the x-axis, guess what? We're going to use basically an identity matrix sort of style, just like we have before. And this will be zero. This will be cosine of your rotation degree angle. Sine. And basically we're using the same formula. But it's just being moved around a little bit. Okay. And cosine. 
So that is if we want to go on the rotate on the x-axis and we're going to use a similar formula. This is going to be a rotation on the y-axis. So this will be cosine and zero negative sine zero one zero sine your degrees and you can see that we're using basically the same formula we were just using a slightly modified version of it and then if you wanted to rotate on the z-axis you're going to have basically everything crammed up in the upper left hand corner sine like this zero and then negative sine cosine and there you go all right so there's the three formulas for operating and rotating or transforming a vector on the r3 space what about scaling you could pause the video right now and see if you could figure out what i am going to do to solve this basically what i want is i am going to say that i have some different vectors here on this coordinate plane and what I want to do is I want to scale vertically by two and I want to scale horizontally by three. So pause the video and see if you can figure out what transformation you would use to do that. Otherwise I'm going to show you. All right, we of course are going to be able to stretch or compress. Just it depends on whatever we want to do here and basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create this transformation matrix. So what I say, I wanted to scale vertically by two and horizontally by three. Well, if I wanna scale horizontally by three, I just plug a three inside of there. And if I wanna scale vertically by two, I just plug in a two right here, all right? Not too hard. It's a pretty cool uh, solution here. And then we'll just plug in our vectors and get our results and let's go get a couple of these plug them in here and of course this is going to change slightly so let's get rid of these and plug in all of our different points so we're gonna have o3 o negative 3 3 o and negative 3 o and if we perform these calculations, this is going to give us a new result of zero six. This is going to give us zero negative six. This is going to give us a result of nine and zero, negative nine and zero. And of course we can go and plot these new points in and you can see how easy it was to make these nice scaling changes. And of course you can combine scaling with rotations and so forth and so on and there you go all right so cool stuff hopefully you found that very useful and like always please leave your questions and comments down below otherwise till next time